Hello, I want to welcome you to um, an edition of uh, the talk. And today I've got a special guest. Uh, he is um, known for, in some circles as um, in, in acting, um, but is also um, known for his music as well. And his name is Mr. Theo uh, Fawcett. And um, it's going to be interesting talking to him about his career, swapping roles as both in Hollywood and in the music industry. And um, yes, and then he's got, as I said, he's got a new EP that's just come out. So it'll be good to talk about that. So I'm going to invite him in and uh, we'll get to chat. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. So it's, it's, it's uh, yes. Um, uh, our mutual friend, uh, Jay, just um, got in touch about you, you've got a new um Got some new music that you 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 you're releasing, and so it'll be interesting to talk about that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, you know, uh, Theo, it'd be good just to get a um, just to hear. I mean, you know, generally get to know where you were sort of born and raised. Okay. Well, I was actually I was born in uh, uh, in Florida. Uh, I live in Los Angeles, but I was born in Bartow, Florida, uh, where I was born and raised. Um, and my kind of my musical background is, in course, in the church, the Southern Baptist Church. Uh, we, me and my cousins and my brothers and sisters, we was all in the choir. And I started when I was like six. So I've always been singing you know, or performing you know, singing at that young age. Um, my father was a deacon. My mother was a deaconess. So we kind of, like I said, grew up. Our, our background is really into church. Um, and then, um, I mean, it's like uh, that is like always been the backbone. Most singers, you know, like Aretha, or Marvin Gaye, or Donny mm -hmm. Hathaway, you know, you, you know, most of those singers they came out of church, just like you know, uh, kind of like what I did as well. Okay. Okay. And um, I guess going in, 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 in growing up in, in, in those times, did you have people that you were sort of looking towards that, that you sort of um, really sort of, um, you could call it idolized or so, but might as, as, as singers? Oh, absolutely. At that time, you know, uh, R&B was very, you know, dominant back then you know, when I was a kid, you know. Uh, you know, things come like Al Green, Gladys Knight, the Pips, and, uh, Stevie, of course, who's who's my absolute idol, who well, I idolize a lot. Uh, Stevie, Donnie Hathaway, People Bryson, mm. and you know Roberta Flack. Um, those, you know, like the groups of Confunction, Slave, uh, LTD, you know, all those type of groups back then were very prominent uh, for the black experience. Mm. You know, and if you learned anything from them, you learn. Um, production wise and also just musical wise, uh, how to present music. Because that, I mean, that was a great teacher, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and just listening to that constantly, my brothers, my older brothers, uh, uh, Kevin and, and Vernon, it was the one who actually bought all the music in the house. Okay. Uh, and, you know, they bought all those albums, you know, that I, I would see and listen to. Uh, and the most person I would gravitate to was Steve. Stevie was the one I gravitated to. He's the one I latched on to, to really listen to and taught me about music and what, how can a blind man see so much when the guy with eyes can't see see what he sees. Mm. Uh, just how he expressed himself in the music was just phenomenal for me. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, as I said, it sometimes it defies logic as to how uh, that much talent uh, one person can have. Um, but I guess, you know, knowing this, I mean, most of us growing up as kids would have, you know, we're into music, but, you know, either we sing or in a band. But for you, um, what was your sort of career path um, out af after school? Um, well, I, you know, it's funny because um, my sister had graduated from the uh, Academy of Dramatic Arts out of New York mm -hmm. and she moved to LA and her name is Marquita but we call her Kita but uh, we 
So I went to come visit her one summer and I just fell in love with LA. You know, just the vibe, the whole thing. And I decided I was going back and I was going to finish school. So I finished school out here in LA. I finished my last few years of school in LA. And that's what kind of got me into, uh, you know, the entertainment scene. Uh, because <clears throat> when I first moved here, I, I didn't know anybody. So mm -hmm. what I would do is there was a place uh, on Sunset. Uh, it, was called, it was a Hyde Hotel at the time. Uh, they would have a uh, showcase Monday through Thursday. So I, because I didn't know anybody, I was bored. I would go up there and I met a guy there and he let me perform. I was saying. And uh, at that point in time when I was singing, a, a lady saw me and asked me, did I want to act? And she said, oh, hell, if you can sing, you can act. And she, <laughs> she, was, an agent. she was an agent at the time. So I ended up uh, signing with her, and that's how I got into acting, the acting business. Um, and, you know, I did commercials, and I've done a lot of commercials and episodic TV and film. Uh, but then I started getting into the music scene for a um, friend of mine, uh, the lady that I was so-called manager at the time. She introduced me to Stevie One. Oh. And that was the catalyst for everything for me. Because, you know, he was, he's my idol, my hero in music. And uh, she brought me, <laughs> I, I still got my pictures with him. I, it's funny that... Uh, when she introduced me to him and and uh he, he reached out and saying that she could say it, and I didn't know what to say. I was just like, you know, he's just like so many mm -hmm. thoughts running through my head. And yeah. he said, I heard you have so much to say, but you ain't said much. Wow. <laughs> and and uh and I, I said, Steve, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. You know, he just laughed at, about it. And then um we kind of started hanging around a little bit more. Um one he has a studio in LA called Wonderland. Now Wonderland used to be Nat King Cole's studio. Mm -hmm. Stevie bought it and he renovated it and turned it into Wonderland. So one night I, I was, uh, well, I went down there uh, to go see him and it was just me, him in the studio. And I, I'm telling you, I, I hope, this is like the highest moment of my life, you know. I was just me and him on the p piano and I said, Steve, I said, you know, one of my favorite songs by you, it's called 10 Zillion Light Years Away. And I started singing, and he started playing the piano behind me. He said, wow, great job, man, you can sing. Uh, and to hear him say that to me meant everything. Mm -hmm. It, you know, validated me, you know, uh, coming from somebody who's, you know, on that level. And so, you know, I just wanted to pursue that more because, you know, he validated it. You know, because that means everything to me. Um, and so um, here we are today. Uh, my two producers who were high school friends, uh, they produced uh, with Terry and Jimmy Jam. They've done, uh, they done uh, movie scores like Life with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. And I uh, had, a, I think, a hit off of that album, actually, uh, of a Life album. Uh, they produced a lot of well-known other acts. And uh, Dion is like my best friend. And then Dion Dobson they called me up and said, hey, man, let's do a record. I said, sure, let's do it. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. So um, honestly, the, the the whole concept of the records is going back to the root of R&B and being uh, like paying homage to it, you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. core of R&B, and that's what we wanted to do with this record. And so Love At Your Fingertips is the first record off of the album, single, actually, that's the name of the album. Um, actually, I, I wrote that song um, a, back, a ways back, and Charlie Wilson recorded, him and the Gap Band recorded it. Okay. And so uh, I ended up uh, re-recording it again, because I thought it was a great song. I, I actually, uh, the first, I demoed it. I demoed the record, and I gave it to Charlie and to, uh, and he liked the record. And he recorded it. Oh, wait, uh, I mean, how long ago was that? That was a while in the nineties. So the he 90s. was still with his brothers. Yeah, he was still with his brothers then. 
-hmm. And so I recorded, I gave them the record to record. They recorded it and do so well. And, that, and me and uh, Dion and Lance was talking, Lance Whitfield uh, was talking. and said, hey, man, let's just do the record over again. And it was a great song. Mm -hmm. And I said, sure, let's do it. And so, and uh, that that's how we came into Love at Your Fingertips. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, because I think I listened to it and, and it did sound, um, it sounded like a throwback track as opposed to something that was made today that was trying to go back. It felt like something that was made at the time, um, but with... Um, which which is quite uh, a rare taste to 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 how it is now. Yeah. Um, so, but you know, and and I guess the industry has changed completely. I mean, in, on one hand, um, art anyone can record music and release it to the world. Um, right. But and uh, but the flip side to that is you're competing with everyone and everyone's attention. I suppose before when it was controlled by a few labels, but they right. made sure we all heard whether we liked it or not, at least we could hear and they pushed it. But now it's almost like you can do what you want. What is the aim then as, you know, as an R&B artist today when it comes to trying to, which with your music, especially when it is kind of a tough market to really try and get heard because of everything that's around? Yeah, well, it's it, like you said, it is a tough market, you know, and uh, we knew that. But the thing is, uh, the difference is, I think, and I've heard you talk to other artists uh, before, prior, um, and it's about being authentic to what the genre is. Uh, and I think that's what's missing in a lot of the music. That, like a lot of the music, some parts of today is more like a shake and bake. You know, it's like, I can, you can still li listen to what's going on today and it have still have the same the same meaning and same effect because a lot of the music in that in that rec particular record I picked that one because it's very very uh current mm -hmm. you know what I mean even though that song's being recorded you know what 40 years 50 years what's going on it still it still st stands the test of time. Where some songs you will never remember, you know, but you'll remember that. And so our thing was to be authentic uh, in what we do and said, you know what, I'm not going to worry about being current. I'm going to be being authentic. It's the most important aspect of being who you are and what you know. You know what I mean? <clears throat> what I grew up, because uh, a lot of current stuff is just not, it can be current, but yeah, it's be gone by tomorrow because you won't mm -hmm. remember it. You know, the, you can't remember the hook or the melody. And that's where I think it's a lot of it's missing, you know, because um, I was watching uh, an interview on Eric Benet, and he was kind of saying the same thing. Uh, and and you got guys like him, Maxwell, Joe, uh, who I, I, I love all these guys, man, because mm -hmm. I think they're keeping it going. Uh, and that's that's the most, and, uh, Anthony Hamilton. All these guys that go out today, they're kind of keeping the tradition going. And I think that's the that's the good part. And I just want to be a part of that and uh, try to keep that tradition going as far as uh, R&B music go, uh, moving forward. Yeah, but the people that you, you mentioned, they all came from, um, the, you know, in the 90s or so, so when they were on labels and, and, and right. were able to get a, a name in the music industry. So... Even if they're producing enough now, we we can sort of associate what they've done in the past and and sort of give them a, the benefit of doubt. But I do wonder, as I said, for yourself, where yes, you might have made a name um, in front of the camera, trying to to shift that to being on the radio. Um, what are your expectations? Well, my expectations is that you know, like I said, uh, I mean, you gotta really get your hustle. You just do. I mean, it's just a not to go, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's no, it's not an easy task at all. Mm -hmm. But I'm working with a guy like Jay, uh, Jay the boss for us. Jay's, he's, they call him the pit bull because he, because <laughs> he, <laughs> he's determined. And uh, he really helps me in a lot of ways to get through certain doors I normally I couldn't do. You know what I mean? And that's another thing is you got to associate yourself with people. I'm working with another guy named Chris Clay. He's another gentleman. Uh, who's working in, who's helping 
uh, my record as well. And I mean, we we charted uh, quite a few charts in you know, Amazon and, and Spotify and YouTube, of course. Uh, and we, I mean, we just we're hammering at it. I mean, it's, it's it takes work. It's, you know, it's not an overnight thing. And I, you know, I'm not expecting that, but I'm just trying to do my best and try to make my mark and uh, my uh, contribution to the genre. What What about uh, live shows? I mean, because in any in any in any circumstances, that making most of the, the uh, uh, artists today, both who uh, whether they're big or you know from from old school, tend to. to use their catalog as a way of sustaining a career uh, and a, a living doing shows um do you and you know because as i said the um the consumers of, of, of urban music don't um don't don't buy or download or, or play in the same way as 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 um as we did back in the day when we would buy the cd look go through the uh the credits and everything like that. So now we, I mean, but we don't mind paying to go to a show. Um, right. Do, have, you, have, do you, have you been performing and doing shows? Yeah. I, I actually, I did, a, I did a couple of shows in, in Los Angeles, and I'm working on setting up some more shows. Actually, I think a gentleman's want to try to bring me out to, out, to, uh, out to Britain and maybe do a show for him. So I'm trying to get things set up uh, to do that, and I, I am available uh, to do more. Uh, just let somebody know. Uh, so yeah, we are we're working on a, a few things uh, to come out and perform because that that is that's like it's everything, you know, because mm-hmm. people want to hear you and they want to see you. So mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely, absolutely, we're working on that. So then, what what would be your first single that you you if people are saying okay, we want to understand fear and his and, his, and the kind of music we can expect? What would you point them to? What single? That would be love at your fingertips, uh, okay. because I I like that record because uh, it it's kind of meaningful. It's like sometimes people have a tendency to overlook the person that's standing right next to them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you say, well, they're, like, yeah, they're just a friend. Yeah, but that person's in love with you. And you don't know it. You got to reach out and touch. You know what I mean? And so uh, I think. That is uh, would be, I guess, what my signature song would say is "Is Love at Your Fingertips." Okay, okay. And um, where are people able to access not just the music but also get in touch with you? Oh, well, they can go to uh, my website www.theo4set.com. It has my email address, all the links attached to that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, on Facebook, uh, artist Theo Forsett, uh, Spotify, YouTube, you can do Theo Forsett, type my name in, it'll pop up. Um, like I said, all the links uh, really are hooked up to the website itself, mm-hmm. uh, and then where they can get in touch with me. And, and is, is that sort of an end to the acting side, and you're just going to focus full time on music, or what's the plan? Well, it's, it's both. I mean, I don't want to. Confused people it's like is that two people, you know, <laughs> you know, like I'm a schizophrenic or something, but no, but no, that it's the same. I, I've been using that name as an actor and, and uh, as well, uh, and and as a singer. So I, I don't try to separate the two because uh, it's all entertainment. It's just like in old days, right? You had you had the uh, the Nicholas Brothers and uh, Cap Calloway and all those guys sang and danced. You know, it's almost like the same thing. You know. You got the rappers who who were acting like Cube and and uh, uh, you know Queen Latifah, you know mm. it's it's just the same thing. And so it's the so with you you kind of want to kind of do the same thing, so people will be confused on who you are and know that you are the same person. Mm. You know, because uh, entertainment is entertainment. You know. Yeah, I mean, when when is the the last time that you saw uh, or spoke to Stevie Wonder? Um. Oh, um. A few months back, actually, uh, a gentleman. It's funny. The guy that I met, he was from Britain, and he said, uh, "I'm working for this guy, and uh, 
I can't tell you who is it's, it's Stevie Wonder. <laughs> I don't know. It just came to my head, and I just I blundered it. He said, "How did you know?" <laughs> and then and I, I, because uh, uh, Steve had just bought a new house, so okay. yeah, I, I, we we went to go see him. And man, yeah, I'm telling you, um, he's he's just a phenomenal person, man. He, he just not, I'm from, not from. I'm just separate from the music. You know, sometimes you meet your idol and they disappoint. Yeah. When you hear those stories, he's yeah. not that story. Wow. He, he's a genuine good man and a good human being. Uh, and to take his time out and just to talk to you, dude, it's it's a it's an honor, mm-hmm. really. Uh, he is a phenomenal man wow. in every aspect of it. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's one of the best. And you didn't have any plans for him to duet with you on your album? I mean, I wish <laughs> I could. Uh, you know what? I, I'll ask him. <laughs> he probably played the harmonica or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, did you ever ask him? No, I. You know, is this the thing? Is you don't feel like you're intruding in somebody's space? You know what I mean? Um, and. Maybe the next time it will. The next album <laughs> get ready to. Maybe I will. Uh, I'll ask. Okay. But this time I just kind of wanted. You know, you kind of want to make your own staple. You know what I mean? Mm. Stand on your own feet. You know. Yeah. But what? What is? So what is the plan now? Then is it um, a recent single or the whole album or? Well, the album is complete. The album we're uh, we're releasing a single. Uh, the new single is um, uh, what you're going to do. Uh, it's the new single. That's out now, um, but I mean the entire album. If you, everybody want to listen to the album, you can go to like a Spotify, uh, Apple. Uh, you can go to like I said, all YouTube or whatever, and you guys can actually listen to the whole entire album mm-hmm. or download mm-hmm. it because it's you know it's seven songs all together, and mm-hmm. three out of the seven is I wrote those. Three out of the seven is what? Say it again. You said three out of the seven uh, are what? Oh, the songs I wrote. Oh, the the, the ones they wrote. Okay, okay. Yeah, correct. and then and then okay. I mean, how how much of the industry did you really? How have you learned? What have you learned much about it since um since you've gone into the industry? Is music completely different from the TV and film industry? Um. Yes. Yes and no. Um. Because with. Uh, TV and film has a certain standard of, of doing a certain thing a certain way. And, you know, I know that. But I've but see, the thing is, I've also worked in the record industry as well. As a gentleman that was like my mentor, he's the one that kind of taught me about the record business. It was Wally Roker. He's one of the original heartbeats. Oh. He was the basic. And Wally was a, a record executive uh, oh. for a long time. And he kind of schooled me on the, how distribution works and the promotion and that whole thing. And um, Wally, he was a manager of Roberta Flack and Dayan Ward. Those those are his, his clients as well. Mm. So he, uh, he he was like a father figure for me. So he kind of taught me a lot about the business and said, hey, these are the ins and outs of and how you know to do certain things. Because mm. promotion is everything. It really is. Yeah. Uh, and it's... Um, like you say, getting people to know you and, and know the record is mm-hmm. the most important thing. And and also performing, like you said. So yeah. like I'm trying to book more dates to perform. Wow. I mean, definitely Theo, it's been it has been good just to get um to just to hear about your story and, and the fact that your music is out. Um definitely have to, you know, wish you all the best because I know it's um it can be a hard road and, and people wonder all this work, very little gain. Um, but yeah. if there is a passion, then you, you, it uh, it will speak for itself. Yeah. Well, you got to love what you do. You just do. Yeah. I mean, it's just the same thing with acting. You know, it's not a, it's not an easy grind. You know, it's just not. Because you got mm-hmm. to audition, right? Um, not necessarily book the job, you know what I mean? Uh, but you got to love what you do. And I've been doing this a long time, so. And I've been mm-hmm. singing since I was six. Yeah. So, um, you know, I love this. I, I love the business. I love uh, what I do. And I uh, hope to be doing more, you know. Mm-hmm. 
and like I say, you know, get people to know who I am as an artist. Oh, yeah. I mean, just as we leave, what would be the um, some of the more notable things that you've acted in that people might remember or, or look out for? Um, well, the thing, last thing I did was, uh, it's called The Rookie. It's on ABC. It was Nathan Fillion did that last year. Um, you know, of course, you strike, slowed everything down, but I've done a lot. I mean, I, like I said, I've done the McDonald's commercial, Toyota, Ford, and Mountain Dew. I could, um, and I've done, I did, when I was really young, I started, I did uh, like a different world. Wow. Uh, 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 what's happening now? I mean, I have a, I have a long resume. I've done a lot. I've met a lot of people. I mean, and I'm from a small town, right? <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is, I've got the people I've gotten to meet. You know, like William Shatner. I worked with him uh, for Star Trek. Uh, I worked with uh, 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 so many, so mm-hmm. many well-known actors. I met. I met Denzel. You know, um, and so it's this journey that I've been on. Man, it's been phenomenal from from a guy who come from a small mm. town to come to mm. L.A. All I know is possible because mm. I've done it, you know, uh, and to to be able to do that transition and, and hang out with Stevie. And then because of Steve, I married Henry Hancock mm. and then Rod Stewart uh, I went to the Grammys and chance to hang out when I was really young but did a good blast me when he was alive and uh, I mean Michael Jackson I, you know uh, all kind of people I, I got a chance to to meet dude it's, it's been a great journey for me uh, and this yeah. is just another I mean, it's I, just an amazing, amazing thing yeah and the, and the hope is always that to the next generation they would say my goodness I just you know having to meet up with with the, um, with Theo um, you know, somebody who has had a successful, you know, acting career and really now um doing first class music in R and B. And that's always the hope that somebody will have that conversation to say about you just as you have, have thought and mentioned on other people. Um but yeah, so your website or streaming services, that's those are the best service to to check you out. Yes, sir. Um, and like I said, um, you can go to either one and check me out and check my, yeah. my record out. Mm-hmm. Listen, uh, like I said, I'll hopefully I'll be coming to a town near you and, and performing. You get a chance to please come out and see me when I do come to your city or your <laughs> town or, you know, and check me out. Um, so and if they, if they do show up, what, 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 you know, do you have a slight acapella for someone to come and listen to and say, OK, well, you know, <laughs> Okay, let me let me see. Um, see. Do 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 do. My cherry amore, lovely as a summer day. My cherry amore, distant as the Milky Way. There you go. So, you <laughs> okay. Know, <they> can... <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, default is to Stevie, which, you know, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. If you think of Stevie birthed Charlie, Charlie birthed Aaron, Aaron birthed yeah. R. Kelly, I mean, and, and on oh, and wait, on and absolutely. on. <laughs> I want to so, tell you, one of the, my, the dudes, uh, to me, that's kind of unsung is Joe. I really like Joe. Yeah. Uh, the man got a phenomenal voice, man. He's just yeah. got a, I really admire him, him and Raphael Sadiq, of course. Mm. I can name a few more of these dudes, man, that's out yeah. there. So, I mean, I really yeah, Joe's biggest um, problem was that he came out, you know, around R. Kelly's time. And, it, um, I, you know, that, you know, R. Kelly cut his hair and any anyone else felt like an imitation. Um, and as much as Joe, you know, he had a very different albums, different songs and, and style, but R. Kelly was just so big that most, um, so unless you were in a very different category like a Maxwell or or Kenny Lattimore, if you were doing that type of straight up R and B, it was quite hard to come out of that shadow. And I said Joe was a great producer as well as singer songwriter, and um, right. 
but it is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, that goes to show you how tough it is, man. It's 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 a it's a it's a tough grind, you know. But like I said, you know, um, I think he's doing a show with Stephanie Mills. Um, and Joe and Stephanie are doing a show in Alabama. I think it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, it is a tough grind. It is. You got to know what you're doing, like, dealing with, you know. Mm-hmm. But you got to got to stay true to yourself and keep pushing in spite of in spite of what's coming your way because it's gonna come. Yeah. To be expected, yeah, definitely. Well, then we say, well, once this goes out, I'll make sure I put the links to um, to all the social media accounts as well as stream services so people can um, check out your, your, your tracks and stuff. As I said, I, I did um, enjoy uh, Love on Your Fingertips, um, and uh, make sure I got, I got that right because it was uh, Love on Your Fingertips, yeah. Um, felt it felt very authentic, um, you know, yeah. and and as I said, um, taken from the um, film um, "Filled with Dreams." If you build it, they will come, and you know, yeah. just pretty much stay stay in the lane, stay um, positive, and the hope is that those who really need to hear what you have to say will find you, and 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 appreciate it as well. Well, you know, I, I, I just want to reach out to you and tell you, I really appreciate your time. I really do, bro. I know, you know, you say, hey, this is the new guy in town, and you you took your time out to listen to me and uh, give me that shot. You know what I mean? So I thank you and appreciate you uh, for that because you, you keeping the you keeping the light up on uh, for a lot of artists. And, and I trust me, I watch you a lot. Uh, you know, <laughs> I watch a lot in your segments a lot, and I appreciate you. A lot. I'm just telling you from my heart uh, to you. I just, I really do. I think you're, you're a phenomenal person to do what you do. Uh, and appreciate, much appreciated. Okay, appreciate that. And um, yeah, what 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 will be great is that if I get get a couple of pictures and stuff like that, so we can, so when this goes out, at least we have some some something to to, to use to for your thumbnails and all that stuff. But uh, but yeah, definitely we will. Um, yeah, you know, definitely wish you luck and. Um, I th- believe Jay has sent a lot of the links to uh, all your things, so I'll be able to put that yeah. in the in the uh, description as well when it goes out. Okay, thank you so much, and thank you again for your time. I appreciate you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, yeah. take care, Theo. You too now. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you love what you watched, there's over 100 artists that we've interviewed, so please check out the videos. Remember to like, share, not unsubscribe but better still become a member of halftime chat and get exclusive videos ahead of time but thanks for watching take care <laughs>